and Global Affairs Analyst Calvin Dack now joins me on the news for more insights. Good to have you join us, Calvin Dack. Now, uh, this is the first time uh, in, in the latest development on, on, on the U.S. elections, preparations for the U.S. elections, this is the first time Michael Bloomberg um, is appearing on the debate stage along his um, Democratic rivals. How significant is this? Oh, it, it's very significant. And as you know, we've had uh, maybe want to say half dozen debates on the Democratic side since this began. And, you know, of course, the first ones were watched a lot. And it kind of wanes off in the middle. But I think this will probably be one of the most watched tonight because this is the first time that Mike Bloomberg has to answer for a lot of the things of his past. And it's an environment that he doesn't control like he does the $400 million in TV advertising. So it's it's going to be really it's going to be really uh, important night for him. And one other thing on Mike Bloomberg is what's going to be key to watch is you always have primary candidates that will criticize each other. But then we know that when the nomination is made, the Democrat Democratic candidates will fall in line behind someone. But you've got um, folks like Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren who are referring to Mike Bloomberg's past as racist or saying he's an egomaniacal billionaire. I think that was Elizabeth Warren. Those are really hard things to walk back if he ends up being the nominee. Uh, what you just said, um, which is the fact that Michael Bloomberg has spent close to $400 million in ads, is what a lot of the problem a lot of people have with him, saying he's trying to buy his way into the election. Do you think that Michael Bloomberg is trying to buy his way into this election? Yes, of course. And uh, I think one of the things that separates Mike Bloomberg from others doesn't necessarily say that it's right that our system allows that, even though it's completely legal. He has vowed to support the Democratic Party, not only with the presidential nominee, whether that's him or not, and other races, like for Senate and governor. So that at least mitigates it a bit. It's interesting to note that Donald Trump, who claims to be a billionaire, not nearly as rich as Michael Bloomberg, he didn't fund his own campaign. He got small donations from middle class and poor people all across the country. So this is the first time we're really seeing someone of Michael Bloomberg's wealth try to put that behind getting elected. All right, now, the, the candidates are now moving to more diverse states in terms of race. And we know that if, to win the Democratic nomination, you have to win uh, the votes of the African-American women. Now, which of these candidates do you find more electable among women? Well, I think among African-American women, I think that Joe Biden is still very strong, um, particularly, you know, his record as being... Um, President Obama's vice president for eight years. I also think that there are other candidates, Bernie Sanders to some extent, um, Elizabeth Warren, Amy Klobuchar, that appeal. But once you combine gender with race, it gets a little bit more confusing. And I think unless something changes, that'll be Joe Biden who will have the strongest showing among them. All right. Um, you mentioned... Um you mentioned Joe Biden, who hasn't done so well in the, in the caucuses in Iowa and New Hampshire. But we also know that former President Clinton only won one out of 11 primaries and went on to become president for eight years. So is there hope for Biden? Yes, there's definitely hope for Biden. He's not um, ready to be counted out now. However, if he doesn't have a strong showing in Nevada, which has a very substantial Latino population, and then the following week, if he doesn't have a very, very strong showing in South Carolina, then he's got to make a decision of where the campaign is going. Because he's told us that once we get to more diverse electorates in different states, that he will be the one front runner. And if he can't do that, then I think people are going to reconsider their support and his status as a front runner, which is already almost non-existent. All right, um, in Nevada, we know nationally, and it would just nationally, uh, Bernie Sanders is polling the highest. Um, and he's also neck to neck with Bloomberg, who is not on the ballot in Nevada. So how do you see Nevada pulling, uh, uh, coming up? Do you see Bernie Sanders taking Nevada just the way he did New Hampshire? I think it's totally possible that he could do that. Uh, I think that a lot will depend on labor issues, union issues, health care issues, because that is a huge constituency in the hospitality and service industry in Nevada. Now, 
Obviously, Joe Biden has a record about immigration that I think, well, I know it's definitely more positive than President Trump's, but it may be some of what um, Bernie Sanders, uh, some of his labor practices or proposed policies and uh, his embrace of undocumented immigrants more so than Joe Biden that might make him more popular in Nevada. Calvin Dack, many thanks for your time on this issue as always.